From the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, this is Space Shuttle Columbia Launch Control. This situation uh, uh, is, is what's giving us some doubt that uh, we may be not launching exactly on time at 9.50, but uh, that uh, there's still some time in, uh, in the count before we get to that point, and we'll continue counting the clock down. All the work at Launch Pad 39B, as well as all operations here in Firing Room 3 of the Launch Control Center, is uh, continuing as planned today. We're not working any serious technical issues or problems at this time, and we anticipate an on-time liftoff of the Shuttle Columbia and the seven-member crew from Kennedy Space Center in about four and a half hours. Situated in Columbia's Payload Bay is the second U.S. Microgravity Laboratory, and on board that space lab, which is located in Columbia's Payload Bay, are the 19 experiments that will be used in dozens of investigations covering a variety of disciplines, including fluid physics, material science, combustion science and biotechnology. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus three hours and holding. We have uh, just under an hour remaining in our built-in hold this morning. Uh, currently the final inspection team, which is formerly known as the ice and debris inspection team, are at the pad and they are in the process of making a final survey of the vehicle. Commander Ken Bowersox is uh, again suiting up for uh, this attempt to launch today. He's being joined by his pilot, uh, Kent Rominger, uh, who is a highly decorated Navy pilot. Fred Leslie is uh, one of our two payload specialists who will be flying today. He's making his first trip into space. Uh, Leslie holds a world record as a participant in the 200 person free fall formation uh, as a skydiver. He's an avid skydiver. That occurred back in 1992. The crew members are being assisted uh, with their launch and entry suits by suit technicians from both the uh, Kennedy Space Center and the Johnson Space Center. Michael Lopez Alegria uh, was born in Madrid, Spain, uh, grew up in California, and has been a naval aviator since 1981. Mission Specialist uh, Kathy Coleman preparing to make her first trip into space today. Uh, she was born in South Carolina. Albert Sacco, uh, one of our two payload specialists, born in Massachusetts. He'll be working with the uh, crystal growth experiments aboard uh, this space shuttle mission. This will be his first space flight. Payload commander, Catherine Thornton, uh, the most experienced as far as space flight goes. This is her, she's pre for her, preparing for her fourth flight today. She's been an astronaut since 1984 and she's flown on missions STS-33, STS-49, and she was a spacewalk specialist aboard STS-61, the Hubble Space Telescope servicing mission. This is Shuttle Launch Control, T-minus three hours in holding, and we have uh, live TV coverage of our seven crew members who will be flying aboard Space Shuttle Columbia this morning. Again, they're coming out of their crew quarters, uh, getting onto the elevator, which will take them down to the Astro Van, that, which will then drive them out to Pad 39B. Commander Bowersox with payload commander Catherine Thornton, followed by the rest of their crew member preparing for their drive out to the pad and for their greatly anticipated launch today. At this point, it looks like our best opportunity is going to be the earliest opportunity, and we are right on track for preparing the vehicle and the crew for uh, 
for launch uh, at the opening uh, of the window at 9.50 a.m. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus 2 hours, 43 minutes, and counting. Uh, the crew has arrived at the pad, and they are in the process now of entering the vehicle. Uh, Commander Ken Bowersox is preparing for his third mission aboard Space Shuttle. Catherine Coleman, or Mission Specialist 1, is a captain in the Air Force and preparing for her first flight into space. OTC, this is PS2. How do you read? PS2, this is OTC. I read you loud and clear. How many? At this time, Michael Lopez Alegria uh, is preparing to board the vehicle. Uh, he will serve as the flight engineer on this mission. TVD, OTC. TVD. Step 665. Copy. Uh, technically, with the vehicle, everything continues to go well today as the launch team works to finalize all aspects of preparation for the launch of Space Shuttle Columbia, which is still scheduled at for 9.50 a.m. Eastern Time at the opening of a two-and-a-half-hour window. At this time, the booster test conductor is verifying that the chamber pressure in the solid rocket motors is at appropriate levels. Also, air to ground initial air to ground voice checks have been completed between the crew and mission managers here in the firing room, and crew, ca crew cabin closeouts uh, are about to be uh, begin. The closeout crew has just been given the go ahead to close the crew hatch and perform their cabin pressure leak checks. CDROTC perform ohms GN2 press. That's it. PLT OTC perform water spray boiler GN2 supply activation. And OTC PLT, that's complete. Thank you. PLS is go for OAA retack. We're in the process now of retracting the orbiter access arm that uh, permits the crew to enter and depart from the orbiter Columbia. Everything continues to look good, and we're cleared for launch. OTC PLT, caution warning memory cleared, no unexpected errors. Copy that. No problems are being reported from the crew. and initiate O2 flow. The test team has worked really hard to get you to this point. It's your turn for a great 16-day mission. We're closing our visors, and uh, we can't wait to get to work. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Columbia's, Columbia's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. 20. T minus 15 seconds. 12. 10. 9. 8. 7. We have a go for main engine start. 5. 4. 3. 2. 1. And liftoff, liftoff of the Space Shuttle Columbia, catapulting scientific knowledge through microgravity research. We're in a row, Houston. Houston now controlling Columbia underway on its 18th trip to space, rolling on course for a 172 mile high, 39 degree inclination orbit. And roll program. Columbia now falling back to two-thirds throttle. 
Go ahead, throttle up. Oh, we heard you that time, Blaine. Go ahead, throttle up. Three main engines on Columbia now back at full throttle. Columbia is now airborne for one and a half minutes. It's burned almost two and a quarter million pounds of propellant already, weighing less than half of what it did at launch. Three main engines on Columbia working well at full throttle. Good hydraulic systems, good electrical systems. Altitude now 100,000 feet. 14 miles downrange from the launch pad. Columbia traveling 2,800 miles per hour. Flight controllers are standing by for burnout and separation of the twin solid rocket first stage, upcoming in just about eight seconds. Good solid rocket booster separation is confirmed. Columbia now on its three main engines, second stage. Altitude 185,000 feet, 38 nautical miles downrange from the launch pad. Columbia traveling at 3,500 miles per hour, continuing in a steep climb. This would be a good chance to do a 40 at the payload there too.
talking about closing. You can maybe see it's between the top gray stopper and the, the, the two underneath that. And Katie, that is the termination fluid. The uh, top plunger and the center plunger would terminate, so we do not want to close that small gap. Okay, good. CGBA says we're in good shape. Okay, it's, it's steady. It's not rotating at all. Very, very little. Just a slight, slight amount. You want to release it? That's affirmative. Go ahead and release. Base map Huntsville for Fred. Go ahead. Yeah, a couple of things, Fred. Uh, we now have live downlink. We're seeing a good view. Um, is that 
grading in slot nine, and if so, probably should be in slot seven. Yeah, I copy that. I think you're a little ahead of me, but I'm on my way. Yeah, sorry about that, Fred. Um, the other thing is we'd like an IR view uh, again when you get there. Okay, there you go. And I'm beginning uh, step nighter. I might adjust one of the cameras for you a little bit, and I'll start at step nighter and uh, go through some of the um, gradings per... How big is that drop? Um, about five mils, probably about this big. Five mils? What's a mil? Um, it's probably about an ounce. It's about this big. So they're just looking for an update uh, on a one day later story. Is that right? Some zero G stuff. Make something flow. Yeah, I did. Well, <laughs> I'm thinking more along the lines of like while you're working. <laughs> um, I, I guess so. I can tell you what I did. I'll be very good answer questions.
This is Space Lab Operation Sunsville, uh, and as uh, Kathy Thornton continues to work with the uh, drop physics module, uh, Kent Rominger, the uh, STS-73 pilot, now uh, is in the module. Space Lab, this is this is Huntsville for Al. Uh, no need to reply. Just a heads up that you've got a TPR session in uh, about five minutes. Obviously, uh, there's. Uh rather large effects from some of these changes and uh, in understanding uh, what the result is going to be from particular changes uh, it's uh, centered up again and uh, and uh, reduce the uh, motion you have a very uniform concentration of very small crystals and I would say in the size range again of 10 to 20 microns maybe but uh, very small very fine and uniform from the cap to the bottom Copy that, Al. Go ahead, Kathy. Okay, I finished the procedure that you read up to me. Uh, the drive levels are set at 142 dB, and I think I'm ready to deploy. DPM agrees, Kathy. Space Lab Huntsville for Fred. Huntsville Space Lab for GFSC. Go ahead, Fred. Okay, I transferred to area 191 and I started that at uh, 1517. GN2 
pressure currently is about 8-8. Eight, eight. They have the status lights, OS and IS temp lights are on. IS temp just went out, so now all status lights are off except OS temp, TCG verify and normal, and the run light. And the top row of LEDs follows. 33 decimal 6, 36 decimal 0, 34 decimal 3, 42 decimal 4. Fred, we copy, and you're good to proceed. Yeah, we had a good run on the ground, Fred. Good job. Okay, great. And that's a negative, Katie. Uh, and sample three, we have a uniform population of beautiful crystals. And I would guesstimate they're all about uh, 20, 25 microns. And it's uniform as best I can tell from the top to the bottom and from the center to the outside. Uh, Space Lab Huntsville for Fred.
when you start your increment again, I think what we'd like for you to do is cycle over to your other camera view where you can see the leftmost LED, which represents the uh, difference in temperature between the wall and the heater element. And if you can adjust your increments so that you go up in five degree steps based on that, uh, that temperature reading, uh, that would be ideal. Okay, I understand you prefer five degree steps on the uh, leftmost LED. Good copy. Well, Kathy, it's getting better and better, but uh, let's try a couple more down. Okay, Kathy, that looks that looks real good. Um, and they've seen enough from this cell. If you want to go ahead and move on to the next one. In Space Lab Huntsville for Rommel, that uh, we're receiving the downlink video. That looks uh, pretty good. Okay, Dave. The uh, initially started out backlighting, and then noticed the change that uh, they wanted side lighting on it. So what I've actually done is done both, and the view you're looking at now is side lighting. And the view now is side and back lighting. And from up here, it looks like the combination of the two lighting is a better view, but I've been recording both. So uh, the PI gets what he asked for, and then uh, what, to me, looks a little bit better. We always claim to please the customers, right? Yeah, that's real space line. How do you like uh, selling with Charlie? That looks great, Rommel. Sox, looks like we're live on the flight deck with you, and I have the uh, dump information if you're ready to copy. You're ready to copy, Carl. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. Um, let's see. It's, this is going to be a time dump. One hour, 45 minutes. That is the limiting factor. We will set the low limit of take Bravo to 15%. So if you hear that alarm go off first, then you can terminate the dump. Otherwise, it'll be timed at 1 hour 45. And Space Lab for Fred would like you to uh, disturb the cell a little bit. And what we're trying to do is wet the entire base uniformly. Hello, Fred. How are you doing back there? Copy that, Katie. And that's a good call on those tapes. We'll um, monitor the time and change amount. great. What is that you're having for dinner? Or is it breakfast for you? Say breakfast tortilla. You're killing us down here. It's the ZOE here in 13 seconds. We're all going to run for the refrigerator. Hope you get something good out of there.
Behind him we have Old Glory, framed perfectly, except there's one of those whoopee pennants right above it.
Go ahead, Kathy. Angie, we're going to head into the mid deck and get dinner and get ready for bed because um, we don't have uh, much time left up here. But I wanted to tell you and to all our friends at Huntsville and Marshall uh, how much we have enjoyed working with you. For the time we started training a year and a half ago, we've appreciated your determination and your humor and particularly your patience with us. And I, we're happy to be part of the team that's made all this possible. Thanks. We'll see you on Earth. Bye. <laughs> Thanks a lot. We'll see you guys soon. It was a great couple weeks. I think it's steak and potatoes for dinner tonight. And shrimp cocktail. Have a safe landing, everyone. This is Kennedy Space Center uh, Shuttle Operations. We see our first glimpse of the uh, crew back on the ground in their uh, flight suits uh, after taking off their launch and entry suits. And they look uh, happy and smiling and uh, glad to have their land legs back. Shaking hands with uh, Launch Director Jim Harrington, uh, posing for, for a quick uh, picture uh, in front of their vehicle that was their home for the past two weeks, giving thumbs up uh, not only for the mission but for the operation of the vehicle itself, which uh, performed with very, very few problems.